So now we're going right back to basics. We're going to just have what I would term as a traditionally Scottish dish, which is just uh, mince and tatties. Or in this case, it's mince neep and tatty. Now, when I say neep, I mean turn up, and I mean turn up, like the big thing, yellow on the inside. I know south of the border that you call this sweet, but sweet to us are the wee sweet ones, the wee sweet white ones. So for me, turn up, Celtic, big. So actually, I'll just give you a very quick tip on um, cutting these. Get a big knife and when it's, you know, when it's absolutely solid or full rather, just wet, drive the knife down into it and then turn. And you might need to put a cloth or something over the end, but let the turn up do the work for you. So if you just dunk down a few times, even just now, the knife's going down through it. So as long as you've got your hands protected, Kenny's <laughs> making big faces in the background. That's how I cut my turn up and it seems to work for me. So <laughs> don't get back to me if that doesn't work. Cut the turn up the way that you like to do it. But anyway, so kind of rule for mince, around about 100 grams per person. If you're cooking for say six, seven, eight people, even just keep it to the 500 grams and add more carrot and more turnip um, and then it'll spread out a good bit. Now I've just put this into a dry pan see if there's any fat comes out of it. If not, because the pan is hot, which this is, just add a tiny little oil. Depends on how fatty your mince is. This has just got 15% fat in it, so it might just need a little bit of help with it. I'm just going to add the onion straight away to this. Just one diced onion, quite a large onion, chopped quite small, and in. Now, all you need to do here is brown your mince. Mix in the onion and just get it brown. It's not cooking as such. However, I believe as well that once your mince is separated and browned, it is nearly there anyway for the cooking. So my rule is it only gets as long as it'll take the vegetables to cook to actually cook the mince. In this case, all we're going to add to this is some carrot and my meat. Again, cutting turnip. You can see round the edge of the turnip, there's like an inner rim. Well, that's what you want rid of. You want rid of that. Or on the underside, there can sometimes be a dry piece, just get rid of it. And then if it looks like it's awfully grainy, just cut a slice away. But just take the rim off. And we're not needing an awful lot to go into the mince because we're having it with turnip. So just try and keep them as evenly as possible with your carrot. Just wee squares. The smaller the squares, the quicker the cooking. And tonight, just in case you hear my belly rumbling, I'm actually a bit hungry, so there might be weird noises in the background. Not to mention Tinkerbell, I can hear one of the dogs floating around. We'll try and keep her out. Now this actually, this carrot was just one carrot. That's all that was. So there's only, I'm only cooking for three tonight. Um, so that's just one carrot, about 10 pence. I mean, go back to basic vegetables. They're great value for money and they're available all year round. I know in Scotland we always said a neep's not good until it's had its first frost. So I'm not quite sure where this one came from, presumably last winter. But uh, you still get them. You get them in the... They might be starting to look just a wee bit grizzled and old at this time of year. But they'll be perfectly fine until the next season comes in toward the end of the year after autumn. Now you can see mine is still a little pink but just for the sake of speed I'll just add some flavourings to this. Just keep letting it brown up. You'll know when it's there. It's funny some people just do not like the smell of mince browning but if you stick the onion in it it's not quite so bad because it's obviously it's the onion then that you're smelling. But I know my sister, for example, she oh she hates the, the smell of browning mince. Don't know why, but each to their own. But that, that was when I was saying about it breaking, um, 
still a wee bit pink but kind of came in what I was really meaning was you can see how it's breaking up into small pieces so that's how you know it's not going to take very long to cook at all and if there are any big round bits like there's a wee bit there just give it a dunk down break it up it should break up itself but just in case you don't want any big pieces left in so again like kneading the bread great for frustrations no etiquette here just dump 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 right some flavourings now there'll be a lot of people out there who'll say get her like in your mince but for me always but actually not very much considering it's me just about half to three quarters of a teaspoon depending how many you're making it for like I say okay. garlic granules I say garlic dear I did I did just a little bit of black pepper about a quarter of a teaspoon you can always add to it later if you want now I'm not putting salt in at this point because I use Bisto um, powder, pistol powder and it can just have a little bit of saltiness in it so I'll wait till later once I've actually made the gravy up after the cooking and I'll just see how salty it is then so just in with the vegetables and then hot water over the top it doesn't need to be hot water but just for quickness and then you're really all you're having to do is cover it so just give yourself a rough idea by flattening it slightly and then bring it back to the boil now these vegetables will only take about 25 minutes to cook so the order that I do things in just put in a couple of bay leaves as well if you if you have them if not don't worry it's not that important so once this comes back to the boil pretend it's all there and you've turned it back to simmer you can leave it for five minutes if you like five ten minutes i tend not to bother i think like i say it's cooked once it's browned you're just tenderizing it slightly put your turnip on once the turnips come to the boil it'll take about 25 minutes or thereabouts so at that point put your potatoes on and once they come to the boil they should only take about 20 minutes have these prepared in advance if you like and I just leave them in some salt water and that stops them from discolouring and that's as much I think as we can do just now until we're ready to come back and show you how to make the gravy and put it in so see you in a wee bit bye okay everything's ready now I've already mashed my uh, neep and my tatty now for the neep I just use a good dob of butter and just a touch of pepper because neep can actually be quite peppery so you shouldn't need too much black pepper but taste as you go the tarte just the same a wee bit of um, black pepper quite a good dot of butter or substitutes obviously if you're vegan use your oat milk and your vegan butter whatever um, and then a, a splash of milk I, mean, I like milk in my mashed potato but that's entirely up to yourself so they're good to go they're ready gravy Depending on how many you're using, start small, you can always add later. So I know I'll need about two teaspoons of Bisto gravy powder to just short of one teaspoon of corn flour. And then just a splash of cold water into it and mix. Now you might have for those of the eagle eye seen that I've already taken my pot off the heat. That's just to take it away from the, the bubble. Um, I'm just literally taking it away from the bubble because if you put it in whilst it's still bubbling it will just go into big brown clumps. I've already taken out my bay leaf the amount of times I leave these in. And invariably it's Kenny that ends up with them on his plate for some reason. But just gently add to your mince. Like I say you can add more if needed so I'll start with about half. I know how I'm feeling it so I'll know if it can actually take a wee bit more than this. It's thickening up already and it's not even been on the heat yet. So just a little bit more then and then onto the heat to bring it back to the boil. Now at this point this is entirely up to you. See, for me, that's people just think, yeah, that's their mince and tatties, that's it. That's what mince looks like. For me, 
that's anemic looking still. But this is just my choice. You will not taste this, but a little, just little, a tiny wee spot of dark soy sauce gives a nice sheen to your mince and also darkens it up just beautifully. And for me, well, I'm glad to say it looks good enough to eat because I'm just about to. So, we shall just serve some up. Just a dod of potato. None of this ice cream scoop stuff here. Do you remember that back in the 70s? Anybody that's old enough used uh -huh. to get your uh, little ice cream scoop of potatoes. They did look quite pretty right enough. Just a little bit of turn up. I've not over made, to, uh, made too much turn up because obviously there's some turn up in the mince. And then the star of the show. The mince itself. And this for me is probably, along with stovies, the most traditional of Scottish dinners. Just bog standard mince, mashed tatties and mashed meat. So we really did go back to basics tonight. Hope oh, you give it a bash, as always. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave feedback and if you do need any help with the quantities and things it will be up on the Orkney News, orkneynews.scot. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.